No smoke. Look at that. Looks like I am gearing up to spend the next hour or so bent over this longer on making a connector uh, for the autopilot servo back here, the pitch servo. After that, uh, we're gonna keep moving backwards. I got the last, uh, on this end anyways, line in the LRUs, that's the magnetometer. So two connectors down here with a bit of wire reorganization that shouldn't be too tough. Let's get to it. magnetometer the end of the line as far as this end of the CAN bus goes uh, this is gonna be like my favorite one why no CAN bus splicing four or five wires should be easy I'm gonna get this wrapped up and then we'll take a look at the other side done uh, like I thought this one was pretty straightforward note a couple things this loose wire here is one of two that will be back here those are actually headed to uh, the trim servo which will be mounted in the elevator tab, just kind of bundled here for now for safekeeping. The other thing uh, is I've got the CAN terminator on here since this is um, one of the ends of the CAN bus. That will make sure that I don't wind up with a CAN bus error when I go to turn this thing on. Speaking of ends of the CAN bus, let's go take a look at the other end. Before I hook up this last servo, I gotta run some wires back through this center console. It's a bit of a mess there. Now I have some wires to run. I didn't uh, actually incorporate any of the servo wires for roll into the wiring harness. Kinda just out of laziness. I also didn't know how I was gonna route them and, and they've gotta go to a connector, therefore I didn't know how long they were. These are all excuses. Now I'm paying for it. So I got to root wires through the existing harness, which I've done before. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad. There's very few for the servo. Uh, let's get it done.
I am gonna have to have a connector here uh, at some point because the wing obviously is not on the plane. Uh, the plan, at least in my head right now, is to get everything going to a connector, create the connector, and then go ahead and wire up a servo with a fairly long lead on it to include a service loop, uh, again with a similar connector at the end, or maybe. Uh, I'm gonna wind up having to unpin and repin that connector uh, to get this wired through the wing, so I gotta think that through a little bit more. All right, something a little different here than we've ever done before. I'm working on the connector that will sit at the wing root headed out to the roll servo, and we're actually gonna pass the shield ground or shield drain uh, through the connector on a pin like any one of these other signal wires and catch it on the other side. So slightly less fun is doing all that over again on the side of the plane. So with, with that end of the harness done uh, and that end of the CAN bus terminated, it's time for an incredibly important test. I should be able to test the impedance between a node on the CAN bus and, and I can pick anywhere right now. I don't have my MFD in, so that works as a great spot to jump in there. What we should see is 60 ohms. And if we don't see 60 ohms, I'm basically going to cry because that means something around here is not right um, and I'm going to have to go through and test one by one. 60 ohms, thank goodness. Um, that's excellent. The, that's again, things are, are popping up the way they should on this. So at this point, I just honestly have loose ends and they're freaking everywhere, um, but they, they're just loose ends. Getting some switches uh, with terminals on there and plugged in, getting some of the connectors that I haven't finished yet um, plugged in, even though they're only half done. I just need to get them started and ready to accept additional pins when I start adding things like oil pressure sensors and, and stuff like that. But I just need to tie up these loose ends. Once they're relatively tied up, uh, I can pop the screens in and we can give this a whirl. Loose ends. Blue sands. Blue sands. Blue sands. While there's still a ton of loose ends around here, uh, I'm running out of ones that are immediate. There are a couple hanging out of the panel here, so I guess I'm gonna tackle those next.
I am exceptionally nervous for what could happen here. I've checked everything numerous times. I can't imagine. I can imagine something going wrong. Something will go wrong. Um, and there's, there's going to be items that I need to fix and problems I need to hunt down. I just can't imagine something going catastrophically wrong. Little did I know something had already gone wrong. The memory card in my main camera was full. So despite putting a fresh battery in, I only got a little bit of that footage, which bums me out. It makes me seriously want to cry. However, I was lucky in that I had two other cameras running and the ability to overlay uh, some reenactment, if you will, when needed. <sighs> No smoke. <laughs> Look at that. Golly. Holy moly. It's all working. No GPS, that's to be expected. I've got three ceilings and a roof on top of me. I got things showing up here. The air ink is in there. The mode controller is in there. The GEA is in there. Magnetometer is there. The AHARS is there. It's just giving me an X because outside air temp is invalid. We know that because I haven't hooked that up yet. It does say config module is missing on the PFD. I wonder if it doesn't know which one the PFD is. Oh, I got a beep through here, so that's working. Huh! <laughs> I can hear someone on the radio, just barely. Uh, that was absolutely incredible. Um, and there's a couple things that I need to work out. Now, I still have to do system updates, uh, system configuration, and, and this is just the, the very beginning. But no smoke, and, and that was the bar we set for today, it was no smoke, no fires, and, and I think I nailed it. Um, there is one other thing that I'm eager to test that could easily lead to smoke and fires for those of you that were hoping for that direction and that's the battery backup system. I left it unplugged. Um, just no need to, to, to put too much uh, on the line all at once but I'm going to plug that in and, and see if it functions like I anticipated. Such a clean install on this. I'm really happy with how it came out. Uh, if I flip this switch, it should mimic um, a power out situation, a low voltage situation, and I should see limited equipment come online. And I do, I see my AHARS here and my PFD, uh, which is excellent. That is really cool. So that means that also my GEA has power. 
Um, and this the would also the G5 would also come to life. Um, however, I don't have the battery backup plugged into that yet, so I'll get that installed. Um, but that means that this is working like it should. Real quick, because uh, I. I'm excited, I'm gonna blaze through this. I'm gonna update the software on the MFD and the GNX, um, and then I will update the software here. I should have the software up to date through the whole system, and we're gonna start messing around with the configuration menu. Some cool notes. This is now updating the software for all the LRUs. You can see them coming online. And now that they're both on the same software, the uh, MFD on the other side took itself out of reversionary mode and is now back to the full map. Looks like the G5 here just updated. That's pretty sweet. Bam. And I can see back here the GSU was doing some color flashing, so it's obviously going through an update as well. Look at this. This, this is exceptionally exciting. It's just freaking cool. It's, it's going through, everything's updating. Um, there are some warning signs that, like literal warning signs that I'm gonna have to check out. I think for the most part, um, things are operating as they should be. Uh, I'm gonna let this continue updating and then we're gonna get into configuration mode, see if we can see why we're getting some X's and, and again, warning signs. This bums me out. That's gonna be the first thing that I have to hunt down is why does it not sense the config module? That just needs to be calibrated. That just needs to be calibrated. What we're seeing here is great. Network error rate, 0% on everything. It means the CAN bus is working like it should. This, this is concerning. Um, without the config module, configuring the system doesn't make any sense. 
Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut this down. I'm gonna check to make sure that that tiny module is in there. That the PFD is designated as the PFD uh, via uh, a, a jumper on that connector, and that I haven't mixed these two up. Um, though it, it seems like it definitely realizes which is which. Um, and I'm gonna reboot. I, that's the first course of action here. The second will be uh, to start to configure things. Let's shut this down. All right, a little embarrassing, um, but I actually had the data and clock cable uh, or pins on the config module reversed. Um, again, incredibly embarrassing, but we're going to try this again. There it is, valid config module. Fantastic. Um, everything else seems like it's working. Uh, so I'm just gonna move through these menus. Um, now, there are great videos uh, out there if you wanna see someone move through these step by step. I won't put you through that. So it's been a couple days since the big power up um, and I've been tinkering with it a little bit here and there. Um, overall, I'm, I'm blown away. Uh, relatively few problems and I'll be fully transparent because I think that's important um, with regard to what went wrong. But for the most part, I'd say 95% went right. Uh, I did, as I mentioned, have two wires swapped on my config module that threw an error. It was pretty easy to hunt down um, and correct. I did have a pin misplaced on the 375, the IFR navigator. All that did was prevent it from powering up with the rest and making me manually hit the power button. Uh, I simply moved it one over, I, I miscounted somewhere along the way, and it's operating like it should. It took me a little bit to figure out some of the settings needed. Uh, this was not a setup issue, uh, more or less just learning configuration. Uh, getting into the configuration menus of each machine and making sure that the languages are all uh, congruent and, and speaking the same language on receive and transfer, essentially. I would say the biggest mistake out of everything with related to the avionics is the camera died right as they hit the switch. Uh, one camera, the, the main camera. Um, but man, what a, what a bullshit move that was. Luckily, I did have the two GoPros uh, dusted off and out for this, and I've overlaid some, some B-roll on, on that whole segment. Hopefully you didn't even notice. Um, but oh my God, I was mad. Now I've, I've got a ton to do, um, and I know what I need to do. I'm finding it a little hard to actually do it. Uh, I've been working towards this power-up moment for so long that I sort of need to get myself reacclimated and find a new milestone to look forward to and start to line up what's in the way and, and what I need to finish until then. Because right now I'm a little lost and just kind of wandering going, well, it's like almost like a, a I don't know, a post goal hangover of some sort. But I'm going to find focus. Um, I've already got a couple uh, pieces, low hanging fruit items that I'm going to chip away at as I start to regain motivation and momentum on the build. Uh, and I'm excited to have you along with me for that. Let's do it. One other problem not yet mentioned was my flaps. Uh, despite getting a readout on the screen that matched corresponding movements in the flap toggle switch, I was getting no voltage to the flaps whatsoever. Uh, ultimately, messing with the flap sensor, the position sensor, and ensuring that I wasn't at the far reaches of its throws, along with thoroughly checking the wires, somehow worked out the problem, uh, and then the flaps now work flawlessly. Despite searching for some steady ground, if you will, I am excited about what's coming next. Um, I'm excited to get 
building again and I'm excited to have you along with me. So if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed and you got notifications on. If you think I did a superb job on this part like I did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I'd love to see it. We'll see you soon.